Hello Internet people! Today I'm gonna walk you through our brand new system dashboard which is one of the much improved features of Sonograph 12 which was just released last week. So let's look at this dashboard here. You see a couple of bars, mostly green, some red parts in it and the more red something is, the more uh, it requires your attention. For example, here in this little dashboard we can see um, the name of our system. It's written in Java and the baseline we're using as comparison is Sonograph 10.4, which is um, uh, quite a bit older than the current version we're looking at, which is version 12. So you see some major difference between Sonograph 10.4 and Sonograph 12. For the quality gates, we have three failed ones right now. That is just temporary because we just finished a big release and there's some um, open ends which we still need to fix. If you want to find out which quality gates failed, I can just look here at the issues view and find out that three of our four quality gate code smells, coupling and no new warnings and errors failed. Yeah, coupling metrics increased a little bit, so that's something we're going to clean up now in, in the next sprint. Code smells, since we have a couple of uh, fix me's in the code and the number of fix me's definitely increased and it's something we usually don't want and we have a couple of new errors and warnings which also will need to be addressed. But that's just a temporary state and it can be fixed, but we can see it right here in the dashboard. Now the next box is about architecture. So that box only shows metrics if you have an architectural model and of course for Sonograph we defined an architectural model. So this tells us we have no code with architecture violation and also all our code is covered by architecture. So there's not a single Java file in Sonograph that is not assigned to some architectural artifact, which is great. So this is basically nice, uh, works 100%. Of course, that's how you should keep it if you're working with architectural models. The next box, is, box uh, looks at your overall structure and uh, especially structural erosion. You want this to be as green as possible. It looks at uh, cyclical dependencies between um, components and packages. And in our world, a component usually is a single Java file or a single C sharp file or something like that. So we can see the percentage of entangled code. So that's the percentage of fully analyzed code in source files involved in any type of cycle, which is 1.23% here. It's not too bad. We have a couple of classes that uh, form uh, cycles within packages. And I think the biggest cycle group in our system is something like 14 elements. And altogether, 7,152 lines are involved in cyclical dependencies. So that's, it's not a very big deal. And most of those cycle groups are pretty small. The second number you want to look at is the relative entanglement. That's an even more interesting number because it looks at um, the metric uh, relative cyclicity on the package level and on the component level, and each of them contributes 50% to the value of that entanglement. You want to also have as little red as possible here. And the more red is, the more serious cycles you have going on and the uh, more you suffer from structural erosion. At the end, I'm going to show you a system that really suffers from that problem. Of course, using Sonograph helped us to keep Sonograph pretty clean. The next box looks at complex code. So 13.3% of our code is marked as complex. And usually what we do here, we mark methods that either have an indentation of more than four or extended modified cyclomatic complexity of more than 15 to be complex. So those thresholds are default thresholds and you can change them if you go to the uh, system settings, system configure, you can work on metric thresholds and, and, and change those thresholds in any way you would like to do. So you could put a different threshold on modified cyclomatic complex, extended modified cyclomatic complexity. Let's do that as an example. We go on the routine level, modified extended cyclomatic complexity. And instead of using a threshold of 15, we're using a threshold of 10 now, just for fun. Apply and close. And now suddenly, 21% of our code is in complex code. So it's basically 
compares the number of statements in complex method with the overall number of statements in your code. The next one looks at your code organization and here we want to find out how much of your code is in really large files because those files are usually those bottleneck classes where a lot of people need to make changes and this just adds complexity in bugs. And in our case, 7.89% uh, of our code is in large files and the large file is defined with a threshold of 1000 lines of code. Everything that has more than 1000 lines of code is considered to be a large file. Again, you can change the threshold if you think large files should be marked as 800 lines and up. Just change the threshold and, and um, the dashboard will adjust it accordingly. Now in the size box, we have a breakdown of um, the different components contributing to our lines of code metrics. So we have what we call fully analyzed code. Then we have code where issues are ignored. This is code where you usually would um, exclude generated code and then you can exclude test code. In our case most of the code is fully analyzed 74%. Then we have a little bit of generated code. code. So the generated code um, does not create issues and does not uh, flow into those complexity and code organization metrics. And then um, the gray code is completely excluded as test code. You define those exclusions in your workspace tab. So if we have a couple filters here, we have a production code filter, which excludes all test code. And then we have an extra filter, the issue filter excludes all generated code. So, and then last but not least, we can also look at duplicated code, um, copy and paste programming. We have very little of this in Sonograph. So 1.9% of our code is considered to be duplicated code. And of course, we want to keep that number as small as possible too. You might have noticed that we, that we have those little plus signs. If you want to get a little bit more information, for example, in structure, we have a lot more metrics for you. We look at unresolved cycle groups. We look at the uh, biggest cycle group. We look at maintainability level, a metric that basically was developed by us to measure overall maintainability. So that went down a little bit. Propagation cost went up a little bit. Average component dependency went up quite a bit. And also the highest module average component dependency went up quite a bit. So that's a, so we added some extra coupling here with the new release. And that, of course, needs to be uh, managed. And here we see how much of our entangled code is ignored. So basically all of our entangled code is in ignored cycle groups. So the cycle groups we have are basically, basically cycle groups that we tolerate and we don't want to do anything about them. They're relatively small and few apart. You could look at it right here. So right now we have, we show everything and we see all the cycle groups. But if I would just hide the ignored cycle groups, I wouldn't see anything. And so most of them are pretty benign and small. So same is true for code organization. We can see how many lines of code did we ignore in large files. So, so if you work with ignore and fix um, resolutions, you can see how much they're affecting your overall code here. And of course we see the changes. Uh, that is quite interesting because it uses baselines. Unfortunately here for the key metrics like entangled code, we don't see any changes right now because the baseline was recorded with an older version of Sonograph that didn't have those metrics yet. As soon as you record your baselines with Sonograph 12, you also will see difference numbers here, which is actually quite interesting because it tells you if you're moving into the wrong or into the right direction. And as promised here at the end, I'm going to show you a system that is suffering much more from structural erosion. In that case, we're looking at Apache Cassandra. We don't have an architectural model here. We don't have quality gates, but um, we definitely have structural issues here. You can see that 94% of the code in Apache Cassandra is involved in any cyclical dependencies. Um, that's quite a big number. There's a little bit 6% involved in non-critical cycle groups. The difference between critical and non-critical cycle groups again is configured over the system. You can say that um, everything with six elements or more are marked as critical. Here, so cycle groups with six elements or with less than six elements 
are considered uh, moderately problematic, so not critical as the other ones. And you can configure this on all levels. Here for this system, the magic threshold is six. So most of them are in critical cycle groups, 91.78%, 2.32% uh, is entangled in non-critical cycle groups, and the rest, 5.9%, is not involved in any cycle at all. You see there's hardly anything left of the code that is not involved in some kind of big cycle. Now that by itself is already bad, but the second bar you need to check is this one here, which uh, talks about relative entanglement. If you had a lot of small cycle groups here, that relative entanglement bar would be much greener and much less red. So that tells you how severe the problem is. And that means we really have a severe problem here because a relative entanglement of 78.36 means that you don't only have lots of cyclical dependencies, you also have a lot of large cycle groups, which we can confirm right here. If I look at my component cycle groups, the biggest one comprises 1300 comp more than 1300 components so that's a killer cycle group the same is true for the packages and we also know by using baselines that all these numbers actually grew quite a bit over time so average component dependency for example between apache cassandra 3 and 4 grew by 510 points we have 36 more cyclic java packages structural depth index increased dramatically and uh, we also dramatically increase the number of cyclical components and cyclical packages. So overall, this is an example for a system where you have some really severe structural erosion. And I would highly recommend that you run Sonograph over your own system. This feature with measuring the structure is also part of our free product, Sonograph Explorer, so you don't even have to pay for a license. So that should be it for now. If you have any questions, just contact us. We'll be happy to help and have a great day. Bye bye.